It's been a little while since I talked about macOS platform SSO. Really, I think when I last tested it, it wasn't a great experience. So I thought I'd test it again today. Now, I'm going to show you how to set it up. Super quick, though, because I, I know it's boring to go through all these config screens. And I do want to show you the policies that are there so that you can make sure they align with what you've got if you're having any issues setting it up. Um, I also want to walk through some of the gotchas, so I will I will be doing that. So don't don't skip to the end. It will it will be have some interesting content throughout. I don't say this often enough, actually. To just as a reminder, it'd be brilliant if you'd subscribe if you haven't already. According to the stats, less than twenty percent of you who watch this channel regularly have actually subscribed, and you know subscribing costs you nothing, and it gives this channel a whole load more opportunities. So please do subscribe if you can. Anyway, let's jump into the Intune Admin Center. So from the Intune Admin Center, I want to just quickly show you what I've got. So I've got the uh, in devices. Go to macOS, then enrollment. And in fact, let me just zoom in a little bit so we can see things a bit bigger for those of you who aren't on a PC or a Mac or on a full screen. So I've got the Apple MDM push certificate already in place and I have DEP, so um, Apple Business Manager Automated Device Enrollment. So that's already configured. I'll go into the tokens here. You can see I've got a token. It's already there. I have a synchronized device, which is this one here, and it has a profile assigned. And I'll, sh I'll quickly show you the profile because that's obviously very important as well. I'll go into the properties on this profile. It is using Enroll with user affinity, set up a system with modern auth, and it's going to await final config. Pretty much all I've got. I also allow uh, touch ID and accessibility just as examples. You can obviously change these. Now I've deployed this to all devices. Oh, actually also I've got the account settings with local primary account configuration set. So this is set to yes. It will pre-fill the account info. It will automatically assign the username and the full name for me, which is great and it will prevent the user from editing it. Really simple to, to set up, so just go through that in the enrollment properties. So back into enrollment. Now, that's all I've got set. The device I'm enrolling is an Apple Business Manager device. It's in Intune, ready to go. So, so I'll show you the next thing. That will be in devices, down to macOS, and then configuration. So I have platform SSO set up, so I'll choose that and down into the configuration. I'll go into edit so we can see it a bit better. We have these things. And when I mention see it a bit better, it's it's an awful experience to, to actually configure this because it's, well, actually, to be honest, it is in the right order right now. But when you, when you create it, it jumbles all of these up. So URLs is at the top. Uh, it's, it's just not obvious. And when you're configuring it, you should reference the guide from Microsoft on how to configure platform SSO for macOS devices in Intune. If I scroll down, it shows you the prerequisites, mainly that macOS 13 is required and you need the company portal deployed to the device. Importantly, no one needs to be logged into the company portal because that's already done through uh, automated device enrollment. It just needs to be on the device because that does the enterprise SSO proxy stuff, the agent stuff. So that's important. We can use Platform SSO to do single sign-on for Edge, Chrome, and Safari, but with Chrome you need the uh, the additional um, single sign-on extension. And if I just scroll down, it, it says we can choose between Secure Enclave, Smart Card, and Password. Now, Secure Enclave is very similar to Windows Hello for Business. It doesn't need a password to log in. It prefers the, uh, the, the gestures, so the Touch ID. And that will be how I'll demonstrate this. I'll choose Secure Enclave. It's the preferred. If you can use Secure Enclave, then that's great because it also allows you to use your, your credentials as a passkey. So with Secure Enclave, we'll, we get a load of benefits, but I'll, I'll move on and go straight down. Actually, the only other thing to show you actually is, the, is that we don't have local Mac passwords synchronized with Enter ID. So when I set up this device in a few moments, I'll have to choose a password that password that I set as the user on this Mac, this local password, will remain. It won't be overwritten by Enter ID like we have with the password platform SSO. When we use Secure Enclave, that password just stays the same. We just ideally never need to use it. So I'm going to scroll down and 
get to this the bit about creating it. You create a policy called macOS Platform Messenger, so you can call it what you want, but just for consistency, I've gone with the same naming convention. We need to go into the settings picker and choose authentication and extensible single sign-on. And once you're in that, we need to specify these things. So we need to specify authentication method, extension identifier, platform SSO. Let me show you. Go into the settings picker and type extensible single sign-on or just extend. So hopefully that'll work. There you go. Extensible single sign-on. And you can see I've already got these things selected. Let me zoom out a tiny bit so we get a bit more space on the screen. That didn't help at all. Anyway, uh, extension identifier is selected. Platform SSO is also selected with authentication method set. Token to user mapping is generally enabled. Both of the things inside that are turned on, which is account name and full name. Use shared device. And then these bottom ones here. So registration token, screen lock behavior, team identifier, type, and URLs. So you need to set those. And it mentions those here, right? Very simple to do. Just follow the guide there. Then for each of those things that you've set, Apart from this one, if, unless you're using macOS 13, for each of those things that you've set, just copy what is specified in the setting here. Very simple to do. So that's what I've done. It's it's all up and running. So I'm going to move out of that and show you the final thing, which is that I have deployed the company portal. That's very important to do. So we're going to choose scripts. And I've actually deployed it as a script, which is this one here. Now I got the script from the shell script samples. I'll put it in the description, but this is a fantastic GitHub repo from from Microsoft. I choose config, not config. We'll, we'll do apps, shall we? Let's go to apps and then company portal. And it's really just a case of opening this, choosing download, and that's the script you just need to put in the in this section here. Be very aware that you need to not run this script as the signed in user. So choose set that as no. You can hide the script notifications on devices. We don't need it to run on a regular basis, so we can choose not configured there, but we do want to give it a chance to retry if it fails. This is currently deployed to all devices, so that's good. So I've configured that and it's all done. Now the next step is for me to just to boot this device and get it enrolled, right? So let's move over to my device. And it's just ready for me to start working through this. So I'm going to just choose the language. Now remember, this is what the user will experience when they go through it. So this is very important for you to pay attention to. We're going to choose the language, uh, the country or region. And now accessibility is on. Now this is always, I think this is always on because it has to be in order so you can specify if you have any additional needs. And, and the Wi-Fi network, so I will configure that. And now it says, that this device is owned by the company. So I'm going to choose Enroll. And this is where we're asked to sign in. So the user needs to type their Enter ID credentials at this point. Enter ID obviously being the uh, their Microsoft 365, their email address and password normally. I just need to do multi-factor authentication. That's also a requirement for setting up using this method. So I've now completed multi-factor authentication. At this stage, there's nothing else going to appear on this screen. It'll start enrolling the device and pushing configuration. Because we've set it up to await final config, it will wait for all of the configuration to come down to this device before showing the desktop to the user, which is very similar to the enrollment status page that you get with Windows Autopilot. So this will just take a few moments. I don't have much configuration that I push down to this device. It's just a demonstration, really. So when it's finished, we'll be able to go in and see what happens to get this device entry joined because we want it to be entry joined in order for it to do the platform SSO. Now, it's important to understand that it's all the wording is a bit weird because it mentions things like register when you're going through this. It says you need to register this device. And actually, it's going to be registering as an entry joined device. So it really you're joining this device. I think they could pretty clear that up a little bit. Okay, we're at the create a computer account screen. As you can see, it's already pre-filled the full name and the account name. Now, this is the full name for Enter ID. So that's their first name and last name. And this is also their, the start of their UPN. So her email address is adelv at nextcoffee.co.uk. But we've just stopped before the at symbol, and that's the partial UPN right there. So I'm going to type a password. And this is not the same password as their... Enter ID password. Their Enter ID password is much longer, so you'd see that, and we'll we'll be able to determine whether it's updated or not. 
I'll choose continue and it's creating the account for me. We'll give that just a few moments. I need to choose the time zone. You can probably set that automatically with some configuration and touch ID. So I'm going to just go through this now. Need to double press the power button to enable touch ID setup, which on a Mac mini, the older Mac mini is really easy to do because you just reach to the back of the device on the newer Mac mini. You've got to lift it up and, and get to the bottom of the device and stuff. So it's less ideal on the newer Macs. Okay, all done. It says welcome to Mac. We get the continue button. Okay, so what I'm hoping is that my application start to come down to this device right now. I'm expecting the company portal as a start, but I think also Slack and a few other applications I've pushed to this device. So I'm hoping they come down pretty quickly because this is kind of where the user is expecting to see their apps. They're you know, hoping to get to work pretty quickly. So we do need these to you know, get there as soon as possible. Uh, I have a reasonably fast internet connection here. There's nothing else happening in this office. It's it's early in the morning. So I think it should happen pretty quickly. But you can see the time at the top right. What we will do is see how long it takes to actually uh, arrive on this device. Now, you, you might have spotted just at the bottom, it ju jumped around. Um, that, this little uh, space, I, that's not because I'm putting the mouse there. It's generally just opening and closing an application. I think it's the Microsoft auto update. Very annoying, but it does show that stuff's already happening. Now auto update will, will have been deployed when the company portal gets installed because I've pushed no other Microsoft application. Now auto update has this required data notice. I think you can probably suppress that. I haven't bothered with uh, to do that, but I'm sure you can do it with a plist. So I'll just close that and I'm going to leave the the notifications on the top right so you can see as they stack up and the user will probably close them in fact i was tempted to close them just there but i'll leave them just so they can stack up while we go through this so the company portal is installed let's check that actually i'll go to launchpad there it is okay so i'm not going to sign in i don't think the first thing a user would do is open the company portal and sign in that feels like a weird thing for a user a, a normal user to to think to do so i'm going to not do that i'm just going to wait and if you give the instructions to the to your users, just to give it X minutes, right? And we need to figure out what that X, I need to figure out what that X is in my case. I'm pleased that the company portal has come down within a minute, which is great. So we now need to wait for the rest of the stuff to come down so that we have an idea of how long this process takes. All right, so it's been just over 10 minutes and nothing is happening. We check back in the Intune console I'll just, that's the machine there. I'm just going to refresh that and see when the last check-in time was. The last check-in time was three or four minutes ago. It certainly checked in since it was registered, since the company portal came down. So it's an Intune device. It's it's all up and running. If I go to device configuration, it has the platform SSO configuration. The software update one seems to have had an error, but it's, it's got the platform SSO one. And the configurations have all succeeded. So I guess I'm wondering why that isn't doing anything on the device. It's not saying that it that registration is required. And we can see whether it's enrolled. And it, I mean, it obviously isn't, but we could see whether it's enrolled in users and groups and down into network account server. Oh, well, that was annoying because I clicked it the moment it it updated. And I don't think that will have had an effect. I don't think users need to actually go into Network Account Server to kick that into action. I think it just took about 15 minutes for it to actually kick into action. So if I now, now we've got the registration required button. And that's important because that's what we need users to actually click in order for this to be enrolled into Enter ID, to be joined to Enter ID. So now that we, we hopefully expect the user to see this, and to choose register. And then we expect them to follow these helpful instructions. So platform single sign-on registration, we need to do device registration and account registration. We're going to choose continue. Uh, I can touch ID here, so I'm gonna do that. I just used the touch ID thing. Now it's asking me to register the device. So I need to log in with my enter ID credentials.
do multi-factor authentication. And let's see what the rest of this process looks like for the end user. It says preparing your device this might take a minute stay on this screen while we get your device ready okay clear instructions to the user okay we have some thing to do I'm gonna read the I'm gonna read the instructions now I know users normally wouldn't read instructions they'd probably just click on the blue button but let's actually read what it says to use your Enter ID passkey, you must enable Company Portal as a passkey provider. To complete this action, open System Settings and navigate to General, Autofill and Passwords, Autofill from, Enable Company Portal. Now, I'm going to see what happens. If I click on this, I think it actually takes these instructions away, which, let's see how it works. So it's, I'm going to try and remember it. General, Autofill and Passwords, Autofill from, Company Portal. So, okay, now I'm on my own. Autofill and Passwords company portal i need to enable that and it says successfully configured your enter a pass key close i think the chance of a user actually getting that right first time without some instructions on the screen is actually pretty low but it's at least it was only one click to get that switched on it says registration complete which means i can close that Un and turn off Apple Intelligence and turn off the background items notification. And then just, just to show you where that's set now, I'll just scroll down to users and groups. And then we have network account server. I'll choose that. And we have Entra, uh, Mac OS SSO extension with the company portal symbol. So that's a good sign that that's there. Now, let's see what this means. So I'm going to... Let's try Safari, right? I'm going to just go to portal.office.com in Safari. Portal.office.com. And I'm expecting it to be single sign-on. Uh, we'll allow cookies. All right, great. So now we're logged in with single sign-on. That's good to see. Let's see what the user experience is like for locking the device. Let me just quickly just lock the screen here okay now touch id or enter password so i should be able to use touch id to get back in fantastic touch id works and i guess that's all i was hoping to see now that whole process took around 20 minutes it was a lot of waiting around uh, maybe if other stuff was coming down like office and other applications the user would be a bit more productive during that wait while the while the enter registration was waiting to notify me it I, I'm still not overly impressed with how long it takes for that initial registration to come down because having a user wait that long is not is not great anyway that's the end-to-end -end right now without any tricks I sped it up obviously because there was 15 minutes of waiting and you wouldn't have wanted to wait 15 minutes for to, to see that so yes apologies for speeding that up but you saw exactly what was happening on the screen during that time. So yeah, what do you think? Let me know in the comments.